Trauma and the Spiritual Path Good morrow, this is Chris speaking, Shores of Infinity, with a video about trauma and the spiritual path. There's a series of videos here called The Elephant in the Room. In the room of spirituality, of the path to enlightenment, there's an elephant, or several elephants, and one of them is is the search for enlightenment a trauma response? That is a question no one is talking about really. Almost no one. There's one psychologist who mentions this, but otherwise I've not heard it or read it from anyone. So I let this sink in again. Is the search for enlightenment a trauma response? I have met and talked to thousands of people on the spiritual path, seekers and finders and masters, and I've never met anyone who has not been traumatized in their childhood. Not a single one of those seekers and finders was or is untraumatized. Even if you look at uh, people like uh, Shurbindo, for example, of course he was traumatized as well. His parents sent him to England to a boarding school. Of course, his father meant well. He wanted him to have a proper education. Uh, but which child wants that? The children want to live with their parents and not in some boarding school half around the world. The deeper I delve into trauma therapy, the more the suspicion comes and came up that those two are linked. The only book I found so far um, that examines this is Donald Kelshed's Trauma and the Soul. A few others like Chad McKenna and Mike Helwig mention it, but only Kelshed makes a whole study out of it and gathers a lot of evidence towards it. But of course, even before I read the book, there was the suspicion now, has been there for several years. So if any one of you has not had a traumatic childhood, uh, please write an email to me and tell me, because so far I've not met anyone on the path who hasn't. But even if there were some exceptions, the majority of cases still would prove the point. And then what can we learn from this? Is, does this mean it's all imagination? Is it a compensation and actually there is no enlightenment and it's all uh, some kind of escape? No, that is not the only conclusion. It's a possible conclusion, but it's not the only conclusion. But still, if someone has had a horrible childhood and was not able to develop a modicum of trust, of basic trust in the world and its surroundings, in other people, in matter, in this material world, then of course it can increase the interest in a less material world, in the immaterial spiritual world. And interest comes up for either religion or occultism and magic, or spirituality and enlightenment. For if this material world is not for me, then maybe the religious or spiritual world is for me. The ideal world, the numinous. Maybe, maybe this is so, but still, it is very, very helpful to solve your trauma. And it is possible to solve and heal your trauma 
as I said in other videos, with the help of a therapist. On the Patreon page, thank you to all my Patreons and thank you for joining me as a Patreon. On the Patreon site, um, there were some discussions uh, about around the topic of the shadow, shadow work. And I insist on that again and again, you cannot do shadow work or trauma therapy by yourself. If you think you can do this, then you're deluding yourself. Then your mind tricks you into thinking that it does trauma work. But your mind is part of the trauma. Your mind is the compensation mechanism, is the guardian of the trauma. It doesn't want to solve the trauma. So it can't. You cannot solve or heal or release your trauma with cognitive methods, with mind methods. Your mind is the mechanism that keeps you from doing that. It cannot be the savior. You need a mirror and this mirror is either a friend with whom you do this together or a therapist, ideally a seasoned therapist with uh, spiritual tendencies or experiences of their own. So, um, of course, if spirituality is your thing, it's difficult if you have a therapist who has no experience in spirituality whatsoever. He or she doesn't need to be awake or enlightened, but at least there needs to be a, an interest and in a certain understanding in spirituality. And when I say spirituality, I mean spirituality and not religion. You might say that uh, people like Freud or Jung have done this work by themselves, but this is not correct. They were also practicing with colleagues, for example, each other. So it's important, or it can be important, to answer the question to yourself, why am I seeking enlightenment? What is the reason I am on this path? Is the reason that my childhood was so horrible that I was seeking another way to survive? Which may not be a bad thing. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's part of your karma that this happened to you and it led you to look for things that are not so obvious. Maybe the search for enlightenment helped you not to become crazy. Or not exceedingly crazy. Actually, probably everyone is crazy because we're living in a crazy world with lots of crazy brainwashing going around in school, for example. School is the biggest brainwashing machine and everyone who survives school leaves school brainwashed and crazy. So part of the spiritual path and of trauma therapy is also to deal with this school trauma and education trauma and brainwashing trauma. We have been presented with so-called facts and stuffed like geese. The way things are taught are didactically and methodologically and pedagogically not well taught usually. This is not how you learn. The ideal way to learn is with fun and through topics that interest you. But of course, this is not really possible in classes of 30 or so pupils, most of which don't listen anyway because they're already traumatized from whatever happened at home. So on the one hand, the search for spirituality might be a boon, might be the way to freedom, might be your way out of trauma. And on the other hand, it might be a compensation. You might be deluding yourself in searching for something else instead of looking at your trauma and treating that. 
which will invariably lead to spiritual bypassing. Spiritual bypassing being or meaning thinking about enlightenment instead of actually letting it happen. The way that enlightenment can happen to you, if it will happen to you, is of course surrender. And if you're full of mistrust and trauma, you cannot surrender because your guardians are too active. They will not let you surrender. So sooner or later, you will have to look at your trauma. And the other day, someone wrote to me and said, um, how can I get into coral? I don't know if you really want to get into coral because it's a hell of a ride. But in Spaldynamics terms, this process of purification by, for example, trauma therapy, by looking at your shadow, at your darkest and most secret parts and aspects of yourself. In Spaldynamics terms, this is called coral. Coral is to go through the hell of your traumatic childhood and solve whatever happened there and reintegrate your scattered aspects of your personality. And the way to do this is to let go. This is already the first part of you. You have to start letting go. You have to start to surrender without knowing if you will survive it. Often people write to me and they said, oh, I almost fell, metaphorically, but I just caught myself just in time. Don't catch yourself just in time. Let yourself fall into the pit, into the abyss, without knowing if you will survive it. And then you will get into coral. And then you will be confronted with your fears and your shame and your guilt and your sadness and the parts of yourself that you have not looked at for years or decades who want to be reintegrated and you need to be reintegrated for enlightenment to happen. Otherwise, I'm sorry to say, the probability of spiritual bypassing is almost 100% then you will read a lot of books and watch a lot of videos and think a lot about it, but you will do nothing about it. And with doing, I'm not talking about meditation. Meditation is not a prerequisite for enlightenment. Meditation is what happens naturally, automatically when you are already enlightened. When the mind is then inactive, automatically meditation happens. But you cannot practice it as long as your mind is hyperactive. And it is hyperactive. Yeah, basically, we all have ADHD. Because this also is a trauma response. It's nothing chemical and cannot be treated with drugs, with medication. It's a, it's a trauma response. ADHD is a trauma response. Gabor Mate for example, talked about it a lot. So to make a long story short, it's part of the necessary authenticity of the necessary honesty towards yourself to look at the reason of your spiritual search. When and how did it start? And did or does it have anything to do with your childhood traumata or rather traumata, maybe tra a traumata that happened later, like rape or a horrible accident or something, or a terrible disease or a terrible poisoning, whatever. Or as I said, school, school, elementary school or high school or whatever, it can be traumatic, especially if you had been bullied, for example. And once you thought about it, 
then thinking is not enough anymore. If you come to the conclusion that there is some kind of correlation between your search for enlightenment and your trauma, then you need to get help because you cannot solve this by yourself. You need a mirror. You cannot think your way out of it because as I said, and as you probably noticed yourself, your mind is too clever and your mind is a protection mechanism. Your mind is only a part of the whole of yourself. Your mind is not your whole self. It's a part, an aspect. It's, or aspects, some aspects that took over control because of the trauma to protect you. Okay, that was it for today. Thank you very much. Give the videos a thumbs up if you liked them. Don't forget to subscribe. Join me on Patreon. Thank you to all those who joined me already on Patreon. It means a lot. For example, Sayan, Ofi, Andre, Chris, Jakub, Tamash, Kim, Gabriel, Leonie, Daniel, Kerry, Matthias, Robert, Johannes, Jonathan, Brian, Björn, Mark, Patricia, Kelly, Thomas, Goshen, Gregory, Alex, Tyler, Sneak Cat, Marcus, Thomas, Michaela, or Michaela, Ragu, Courtney, Inda, Brittany, Patrick, Sam, Alan, Zachary, Christine, Isaac, Brian, Rasmus, and Tom, Jeffrey, Yun, Ismo, Tori, and Maxim. So thank you for everyone who is a patron or who used to be a patron for some time for supporting this channel. See you soon.